Well, greetings everyone and welcome to my latest winter project for this year. And it's not a new one. I started it out last year but got sidetracked on something else. So uh, we're going to return to it now and that way we can uh, have something to do when the weather gets cold. I want to show you this ICO 460 oscilloscope that I have owned since probably the late 60s and I'm not even sure where I got it. I think maybe at an auction while I was in high school or something. But uh, it's sat on the shelf for almost probably 37 years now and largely because I decided to upgrade the scope and I went out and bought this little model here, a BNK. 1479B I think it is and this one has served me very well for many years I love this scope it works great but uh, in the meantime we're going to uh, see what we can do with the old ICO back on the shelf here that's sat for so long and we're going to pull it off and we're going to uh, go through it and restore it mostly replace the caps and check all the resistor values for their accuracy and uh, we'll do that right now. We'll uh, get it off the shelf here. And before we uh, plug it in and apply full power, we're definitely going to run it through a dim bulb tester and a uh, isolation transformer just to, so we don't burn anything up in the meantime. So let's get her off the shelf and I'll show you how to do that and uh, get it out of the case, do a good visual inspection first. but. Uh, First thing you want to do when you do this is don't pick up a vintage piece of equipment uh, by the handle. Uh, the old leather gets dried out and uh, this one's not too bad a shape but I still didn't pick it up by the handle. You don't want to do that because you'll end up dumping your prize possession on the floor and end up with a really <laughs> big restoration project in the future. Okay, now that we've got it up on the bench, I think before we go any further, I'm going to uh, slide the uh, chassis out of the cabinet here and uh, make a good visual inspection of the electronics to make sure there isn't something really amiss that will cause us issues. And uh, I think looks like we only need to remove two screws here in the back. So, and then the chassis, if I remember, slides out the front. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Get the plate out of here. Set the cabinet aside and take a look at what we have here. And this looks remarkably clean for sitting on the shelf for 37 years. Yes, that looks looks very nice there. Look at the back side here where the CRT plugs in. Well, this is interesting. Uh, it looks as though on the chassis here that uh, it has a date of 19, looks like 58 on it. December 19th, 1958 by RA maybe, RW from New York and it uh, looks like someone and I think I know who that is that's my handwriting there last calibrated January 21st 1982 how about that so uh, apparently calibrated that uh, shortly before I uh, mothballed it so anyway uh, 
Just a little interesting uh, note I found on there. And we'll take a look underneath. And let's see if we can get in a little closer here. Yeah, looks like we got some old waxy capacitors here that are can be changed out. I don't see this is the main electrolytic power supply capacitor and that uh, doesn't appear to be leaking or anything. And then over here some more high voltage wax capacitors. And then one down underneath that I think way down here. I don't know if you can see that or not now. That doesn't look to be to be blown out or anything on the end. I'm gonna get a little get a better shot of that one. see any any damage there let me get a flashlight on that yeah, it looks to be in pretty good shape I'll probably replace all these anyway when I get to uh, doing the restore on this so yeah I think uh, don't see anything really bad going on here. Get a little light over here. All the tubes are still in place. Just needs a little dusting. That's not bad after all the time it sat on the shelf in there. That's great. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll get to plugging it in to the, uh, over here to the uh, Variac and the uh, isolation transformer. And we'll bring it up really, really slow just in case uh, that uh, electrolytic there has gone south for the season. So uh, we'll get set up and come back and do that. In the left corner, it's mean, it's green, and it's a 63-year-old machine. It's Ico. And in the right corner, clocking in at 120 volts and 15 amps, it's got old school class plus a little bit of glass. But if you touch it wrong, it'll kick your ass. It's Variac. Which one will give up the smoke first? Well, we're going to find out, folks. And I, I have to apologize for the shameless references to BattleBots. <laughs> but we're going to get started and get this project underway. Let the battle begin. So we're going to turn on the uh, uh, power switch down here and turn the scale up to full bright so we can see what will be happening here. We've got a, a DC voltmeter here to monitor the B plus voltage that's going into the uh, um, filter capacitor uh, just in case something should go wrong and it doesn't come up at the right time we can back off on on the match here and uh, in the other meter we'll be monitoring the AC volts going into the power cord and uh, as we start up we're going to flip on the power switch to the Variac. She's down there at zero volts. Maybe a little 0.8 on the voltmeter there. And we're also running from a isolation transformer into a Variac and through a dim bulb. 
So this match will be a little bit handicapped for uh, Variac, but he's got the edge. Olaiko here, he hasn't been in the ring for probably 37 years. It was the last time I powered this thing up, and uh, I think what happened was I uh, got that new oscilloscope and uh, hadn't looked back at old Ico here, but uh, he's back in the ring now. We're going to try him out and see what happens. So uh, if you'll bear with me, we'll turn up everything and uh, we'll see where we left off 37 years ago. And uh, we'll get, uh, get the voltage monitored here. Power switch is on and we're going to bring her up to maybe 20, 25 volts AC and let it sit there for a moment. And uh, we'll keep watching. See if see if we'll like a uh, fight back here any, or, or if he'll give up the smoke early. We hope not. But you never know what's going to happen with these old vintage machines. So we're looking in here. We don't see too much going on. Maybe just a little bit of indication on the uh, dial light here. Let's let's take her up to about uh, 40 volts. And we're up at 40 volts now, folks, and uh, got a little bit more light showing up on the dial indicator. Uh, nothing happening on the tube filaments yet. We'll get in a little bit closer here and see if we can see anything. If we're running at 40 volts. The uh, rectifier probably has not begun conducting yet. So we're back to zero on, on the DC voltage. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's take her up to 60 volts AC. There's 50 coming up to almost 60 volts. There we are, 60 volts. Oh, we got some indication. We got five, seven, eight volts of DC. It looks like that rectifier is beginning to conduct now. And Ico is fighting back a little bit. We'll see if we can uh, judge from the swing of the Variac how much of an impact he's going to make on this thing. So far no real life from Ico yet. Maybe seeing a little bit of filament indication there. Yes we are. And plenty of dial light. So that uh, shows us that uh, Ico's got a little bit of juice left in his transformer and uh, nothing shorted out there yet. So we're up to, looks like we have 60 volts of uh, DC now. That's a good indication. And let's take her up to about, let's say, uh, 70. Let's see if we can get some. Uh oh, look at that. We've got something coming on the screen now. We've got a trace. This is good. We're running at about 70 volts uh, AC and 101 volts uh, V plus on it and we do have a trace and it's a nice one it's uh, not bright but we can expect that at this voltage level but it's in focus which is good that tells us we've got high voltage to the CRT and we've got focus voltage otherwise we'd have just a blur on that screen so everything's looking good so far yes sir Ico's putting up a good fight and uh, I think uh, Variac here is going to come out and he's going to crank her up to about, let's give her about 90 volts and see what we got here. We'll give those uh, filter capacitors a little bit of chance to form up after all these years. Yes, sir, there we are. We're up to 88. We'll hit it at 90 volts. And we got a good trace now. We've got, uh, looks like we got some ripple on the screen there. And it's probably because we're in calibrate mode and it's picking up that AC calibration signal. So let's take a look and see if we can adjust the focus a little bit. Focus looks good. And vertical position. Yep, vertical's working. I'm really impressed ouch, with this thing. It'll bite you, boy. You gotta watch it. <laughs> There's a lot of voltage on that intensity adjustment. And we, we're going to back off on the scale light just a little bit, but yes sir, we got a nice trace there. 
All these controls look really smooth for, for as old as this is. And for as long as it's been sitting on the shelf. Yes sir, that's very good. All right, we're sitting about 90 volts AC and looks like the dim bulb is beginning to light up a little bit here, which is expected. Uh, this, this oscilloscope does take a little bit of current there, but uh, not much on the ammeter. So uh, I think we're uh, we're safe to let uh, let Variac take another swing at ICO here. We're going to pump him up to about uh, let's give her about 100 volts here. There's 100 volts AC, and it's like 295 volts of DC coming out of the power supply. That is moving the trace a little bit. Yes, sir. Ico's putting up a good fight tonight. He really is. 99 volts. Let's give her the full 100 and 120 volts there. Okay, looks like uh, looks like Bariac has reached its limit. He's putting out everything he can right now. And, uh, going through that dim bulb, he's old, he's kind of handicapped down to 112 volts. So we've got 343 DC on the meter, and things are looking good. Lights are looking good. Filaments are looking good. Everything's going on this thing, so. There's nothing wrong here. This is great. What a fight he's putting up. Okay, folks, Ico's got, uh, I think he's got the lead here. He's fight, He's putting up a good fight. He really is. Now, Variac, I think he's got one more trick up his sleeve, and he's got one more weapon he can do, and that's to eliminate the dim bulb and go to the full 130 volts. And here we go. We are 132 volts. Wow, that is high. And it looks like Ico is really hanging in there. Let's turn that light down a little bit. Yes, sir, folks, he is really hanging in there. Okay, 432. Let's turn him back on. He timed out there. Nobody's slapping the mat yet. Okay. Yes, sir. 132 volts. We like that. Okay. Well, folks, we're going to back this back off and uh, put the gloves back on here and back him back down to 120 reasonable voltage. Looks like I think the uh, official decision here is going to be a draw, at least. Variac's uh, done everything he can, and he's not giving up the smoke. And Ico has done everything he can, and he's not giving up the smoke. So we're going to call this one a draw. Hey, everybody, if you enjoyed this video, uh, we're going to have a few more coming out here pretty soon. When I go to recap this thing, uh, we're going to go completely recap it and check all the resistors, make sure they're in tolerance, and uh, uh, we'll call that our restoration for this project. So thanks for watching again, folks. We'll see you next time.